some of you, many of you, are still working remotely and will be for months to come. We're given birth, we've given birth to a new shared culture for our employees that provides stability, social cohesion, identity, and belonging, whether employees are working remotely, on premises, or in some combination of both. How we meet with clients, how we keep employees creative and efficient, how we have onboarded new employees during the pandemic and allowed them to embrace company culture is very important. Some have found it to be a struggle, some have found it rewarding, and that's what we'll be discussing today. The AAF Omaha team has assembled our panelists today with thought leaders who work with client teams as well as their own agency and company teams, and who also collaborate with their human resource departments. They'll share thoughts on the current state of working environments, as well as give advice on how to move into the next phase of our new working conditions and environments over the next several months. Thank you to our panelists for joining us to share their insights. Uh, with us today, we have six thought leaders. And first up, we're gonna start with Lauren Rock. Lauren has been managing and optimizing complex programs for nearly two decades. As an account supervisor at RCG Advertising and Media, she coordinates the efforts of a dedicated client service team in, in, in efficiently executing marketing and media strategies. Lauren co-leads the Public Service Committee of AAF Omaha and is a member of the Board of Directors. Lauren, we know one aspect of your job that you especially love is overseeing and coordinating logistics for special video production projects. So could you tell us a little bit about yourself and whether or not your video production processes have changed due to the pandemic and what you're doing to bond your client team and talent prior to and during video productions. Thank you so much for that introduction, Carrie, and thank you so much to AAF Omaha for having me on the panel today. As Carrie said, my name is Lauren Rock. I'm with RCG Advertising and Media. I've been with them a little over five years now, um, and I, I work with a team of five. Um, every day, day in and day out, um, managing and strategizing and um, implementing strategic campaigns for our clients. Um, and part of that often is um, production or video production, whether we are on, on set shooting or on site shooting or just doing some video production in house. Um, in terms of those production projects, over communication has always been my jam pre-pandemic, that's how I rolled. But especially um, now, just over-communicating, over-communicating, over-communicating. Uh, we just got done with a pretty big production project and doing it remotely just added just another degree of difficulty and coordination. But our team has always rose to the occasion. Uh, we had daily logistics meetings, sometimes multiple times a day via Teams. Uh, Microsoft Teams has been our our lifesaver, our life preserver. Um, that is how we have kept connected and going and moving. Um, so we had multiple meet teams meetings a day um, to go over any outstanding to do's, any items and logistics. We just really amped up our communication with the client, the talent, the production crew, and just were really clear and transparent about tr in terms of expectations, safety protocols, and timing. Um, and again, like you said, with talent, keeping that, that relationship up, just again, over communicate. Um, we always try to provide very clear instructions on, on wardrobe. And one thing I have to, had to learn is we had to be pretty specific about what kind of mask you need to wear. You know, don't wear a mask with words on it. Don't wear um, a mask that over, below your nose. So we had to offer some. So that was an interesting thing, a new thing for us to try to provide direction on that and always have extra masks on hand. You need to have plenty more than you would think on hand so that you can help um, client and, you know, your the team that's on set with you that day. Um, and I always try to keep it very structured on set, but keep it light and be positive whenever I can. I just kind of amped up the positivity, you know, making jokes with people when I can, um, checking in with talent, checking in with the crew, uh, just, you know, making sure they're okay. Do they need to take a mask break? Do you need to step outside for a second and get some, get some air and just, you know, doing what we always do, but amplified even further. Great, thanks, Lauren. I will say Lauren told me if she got a little long-winded, I could play the music to stop her, but we didn't have to. That was great, Lauren, I appreciate it. <laughs> thanks, Gary. Right. You bet. All right, next up, we've got Lindsay Ray Corton. Lindsay is the Chief Executive Officer for the Ronald McDonald House Charities in Omaha. She is responsible for executing the strategic vision for the organization as it aligns with the mission. Welcome, Lindsay. 
Uh, could you please tell us a little about yourself and the work you do at Ronald McDonald House Charities in Omaha and share with our audience how your solid culture foundation has helped your staff adopt to the pandemic? Sure, um, and I, I want to echo some of the things that Lauren said too, and the gratitude that we feel to have the opportunity to share um, how we do things. And I, um, I'll just, before I even start, I know that we do things a lot differently than what is the norm. So I'm just going to throw it all out there. And if it helps somebody, then, then we did our job. Um, so I've been in the position uh, that I'm in now for the last nine years. So we've seen all kinds of different changes and the landscape that continues to change and adapt in healthcare is something that we have to adapt with as well. So all of that, just to say that the world that we have been living in is very similar to what the rest of us are now experiencing for the first time. So families come to the Ronald McDonald House because they have a child who is so critically ill that they can't get the care that they need in their hometown. So they get treated at one of the world-class facilities in our area, and then they live with us at the Ronald McDonald House from the moment of diagnosis. And we're not talking about just a cold. These are people that are traveling from around the world because they have to save their child. So the minute that they're diagnosed, they've been masked up. We've been doing this for, for years already. They don't know if they can go to the grocery store, get their hair done, and they don't know if somebody coughs, how detrimental that would be to their uh, path towards healing. So we were sort of primed a little bit in this world. Um, now we just sort of feel like everybody else understands it. Um, and so in order for us to navigate through this type of world, you know, for years, we all hired, <clears throat> we have hired a specific type of person. And so I really feel like the way that our foundation has been structured is based on the type of person that we hire. And that is um, our mentality about what we identify as blamers versus shamers. And the, uh, um, I, this is not an original idea. We took this from someone else. Um, there's two types of individuals, loosely speaking. There's one type that typically will point the finger at others if something is not going right, um, regardless of what it is. That's just sort of their nature. And we call those the blamers. And then there are shamers, which is every single person who works here. And we take it on as everything is our fault. And we kind of shame ourselves and say, well, what did I do? And how did I cause this? And things like that. Now, both of those, there can be some benefit as long as it's controlled, but the way that we operate with the, the shaming mentality is to not shame ourselves that we are okay, but we are responsible and accountable for the things that happen because of us. And so it's a different mentality overall. So what that has done um, during the pandemic is allowed us the opportunity to maintain consistency with who we are. Um, we believe also that consistency builds credibility. So if we can continue to do the things that we always have done and be the people that we always have been, but the communication vehicle is what is different, then we've established credibility within each other. Um, we also feel really strongly that we are individuals first and employees second, and same with the way that we treat our, our families or clients. They are individuals first and they are sick second. And that changes the way that we interact with people because we don't see them as a label or a, just a job title or anything like that. We start every single business meeting talking about how you're feeling physically, intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually so that we understand where everyone is at first and then we get to the business. But that was in place before we did all of this. So really it's more of an adaptation of the vehicle to communicate as opposed to a change in, in who we are in order to make it work. Perfect, great, thanks, Lindsay. All right, next up we have Alicia Dinan. As Vice President of Meetings and Conventions for Planet Inc., Alicia brings the best products and practices to the event planning process and ultimately to the attendees overall experience. Planet Inc. is one of the only event firms in the US that has their own innovative event technology solutions. They own and produce a custom attendee management system second to none. They also can provide all meeting and event elements in a virtual environment. Alicia is in her fourth term on the board of directors for AMA Omaha chapter, and is also a recent 2020 Midlands Business Journal 40 Under 40 award recipient for her business and community focused mindset. Alicia, thanks for joining us today. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, Planet Inc., and how the pandemic has changed the way you've been assisting your clients' needs across the country? Uh, thank you, Carrie, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, and thank you, AAF Omaha and uh, all the attendees for being here. 
Um, as Carrie mentioned, my name is Alicia Dynan. I'm the Vice President of Meetings and Conventions at Planet Inc. Um, we are a third party event planning company. So, so we do uh, anything from small, uh, small scale dinners to large scale conferences and conventions. So, um, you know, anything from 10 people to 10,000 people is, is kind of our bread and butter. So, um, as she said, we do have a, 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 a platform of our own that we that we've uh, patented that has all sorts of different event technologies. So uh, this this past year, while it's been very very challenging for us in the events industry, um, we we aren't unfamiliar with the digital and the virtual world from an event technology perspective. So um, I think that that's helped us to uh, grow and transition quickly uh, into this digital world that we're all in these days. So. <laughs> Um, I do man manage the larger conferences and conventions, so um, that, that could be anything from New York to California. So as you can imagine, um, when the pandemic hit, uh, much like I'm sure a lot of you are feeling, we, we had to transition, transition quickly. So you can't, you can't have 10,000 people in a, in a space anymore in a convention center. So uh, we had to think on our feet really quickly on how, how we transition our business to make sure that we're going to be viable, not only in 2020, 21, but years to come, because unfortunately, I don't see the virtual world going away anytime soon, per se. Um, while we do see a lot of uh, in-person events picking back up in quarters three and four of 2021, um, just to be safe, you know, there is always going to be that virtual component. And I think that a lot of people are also noticing that they get a larger reach when, when they do extend to a virtual. So, you know, you went from an event that had 500 people traveling to now you can do 1500 people, um, 500 still traveling, but then you get that extra 10,000 from home. So um, that hybrid world, I think is gonna be uh, really key moving into 2022 and beyond probably. Um, so that's something that we are trying to transition to because, you know, um, depending on if you're in New York or if you're in California, the regulations right now are so different. Um, so that's just something that you have to keep in mind from a safety perspective. What you can do for a client in New York, you can't do for a client in California right now. So um, it, it's challenging to say the least. <laughs> um, I've learned more about contracts in the last year than I probably ever wanted to, but here we are. So, <laughs> um, so I would just say uh, anytime that you're planning an event or you're thinking about uh, this, you know, the, the next steps, um, obviously, number one, you want to think about what your goals are and, and what, you know, what you hope that your attendees get out of it, your employees get out of it, whether it's internal or an external meeting. Um, but then also just the safety perspective of it. I think moving forward, everybody just wants to know that they're safe and they feel comfortable attending this event or what, what they're deciding to do moving forward. So um, for, for a lot of our clients right now, they don't know what that is. So, you know, we, we've got some events that we're hosting in August of this year that we're still unsure if it's going to be in person or if it's going to be virtual or if it's going to be that hybrid that I had mentioned earlier. So, um, so there's, there's still a lot. And um, I, I think that, that we've, we've dealt with the, the quick turns pretty, pretty normally at this point. So um, it's not unfamiliar for us for clients to make last minute decisions. Um, right now, especially with people contracting venues and hotels and, you know, convention centers or event spaces, um, the average is actually about two weeks to 30 days out from the event for a contracting perspective, which in the past, you know, it's been years in advance that they're contracting things. So um, that, those quick terms aren't unfamiliar, um, but I will say just keeping in mind, again, your goals for the company, what you hope everyone gets out of it, and then just that safety factor. Um, a lot of virtual events nowadays, you have to keep in mind the inner, you know, the energy and engaging with people and things like that. So we'll we'll touch on that a little bit later. But um, just again, keeping in mind goals and safety, it's big things. Thank you, Alicia. I'm guessing you don't sleep much because that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> you know, I, I've gotten used to you know the four or five hours of sleep, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. All right, our next speaker is Lisa Healy and apparently her fur baby. Uh, if you want something done and done really well, Lisa Healy is your go-to. She loves the challenge, is crazy resourceful and has limitless passion for branding. With more than 20 years of client relations and strategy experience, 
She adds clarity and meaning to new and established brands. Lisa currently serves as a senior brand strategist at Daiki, working with clients like FMBO, Emmanuel, Green Plains, and Sync Health. She's also an AAF Omaha past president, having won the 2019 AAF District 9 President of the Year. Thanks for joining us, Lisa. Uh, so we know you're resourceful. So the past 12 months have probably been a breeze for you, but during the past year working from home, interacting with your clients, what has stood out the most for you in the way you continue to serve clients and follow the Dakey mission and culture? Well, um, I think this is kind of a two-part question. First, I'm going to speak to the Dakey mission and culture part of it. Um, as a branding agency, uh, you know, we're all about, you know, being authentic to who you are. Um, and I think that Greg and Lisa Dakey really showed their true colors by how they handled um, the pandemic. We had this, I don't know if any of you ever saw it, Dakey had this beautiful office that they had recently renovated and it, you know, with the giant patio overlooking a golf course, um, just couldn't be nicer. And just like a month into the pandemic, they made the decision to give up that office space that they had made great personal investment in because they wanted to make sure that they didn't have the overhead so that they could keep everybody employed and let everyone know that their jobs would be safe through the pandemic, which I think gave us all um, the ability to do our jobs um, better without having to worry. Um, and so that I think it really spoke to, you know, our culture and, and our mission to, you know, do what's right and, you know, treat people uh, the way we want to be treated. And um, we have this uh, mantra at Dakey, be orange. And that is all about, you know, just um, being vulnerable and being who you are and um, being free to, you know, do what you can to, you know, do what's best for our clients. And I think that, you know, they personified that by making that change. Um, so I, I think that that made it really easy um, to continue working. And I think that we've all thrived in this environment. We haven't really missed a beat um, working with clients. And I think that um, our clients see that and they um, feel that energy when we you know, meet with them virtually all the time. Um, and I, I just feel like you know, we can exude that be orange spirit um, with every meeting. Great, thanks Lisa. All right, next up we've got Mike Stodden. Over a 40 plus year career in broadcast sales, Mike is the general sales manager at Fox 42 and CW15 KXVO, and he still gets excited about creating and presenting innovative ideas that solve customers' marketing goals. So Mike, we definitely welcome your insights to the panel today. Uh, could you tell us about yourself and then tell us what you're doing to help your sales staff avoid burnout as your team has learned new ways to engage with its clients? Well, uh, thanks, Carrie. Thanks, AAF Omaha. And you see, I have a piano behind me, so I'd like to start with a song. No, just, <laughs> just kidding. Um, <laughs> what it, at first, what was interesting when you're talking about burnout is that what we experienced, and, and again, I'm the general sales manager at Fox 42, CW15, and we are owned by Sinclair Broadcast Group that has TV stations and regional sports networks across the country. So uh, our company's uh, vision reaction uh, dealing with uh, the pandemic has, has been an, a national perspective because as every market changed, uh, they uh, would uh, develop uh, protocols based upon what was happening nationally. It wasn't specific to uh, Omaha. But at first, one of the things that was uh, really interesting is that as we all headed home, and we've been working from home over a year now, um, um, and we'll continue at this point officially until at least June, uh, uh, only working from home and as a TV station, part of the reason for that is 
you know, we broadcast in the public interest uh, with our news organization and our TV stations signal for emergency services and things like that. So if we were to allow staff to bring in uh, the virus and in fact, news, uh, the newsroom and our uh, master control operators that are keeping us on the air where it was going to deplete um, um, the staffing at a TV station, that is an issue for, <laughs> you know, we like to be on the air. So we had to be extra cautious and always put the uh, employee's health at the forefront uh, of uh, our, our thought process in dealing with it. But it, it, it was interesting at the very beginning, uh, each division, each um, uh, training organization, support organization that we were associated with, uh, different vendors, they all determined that we now had a lot of time because we were working from home to do additional training and additional meetings and additional touch bases and uh, additional, uh, how do you deal with too many meetings? Uh, meetings, And that ended up filling up a calendar early on of, you know, there'd be three things scheduled, Zoom meetings or, or Teams meetings at the same time. You know, so um, because not every division and every trainer and everyone was coordinating their efforts. So you just got bombarded early on with like, you know, we, we realize that you're sitting around and watching Netflix. And so with that extra time that you're going to have, let's go ahead and do some extra meetings on top of that. Um, so uh, it, it, that was something that over time moved to more of a natural uh, meeting uh, progression. Uh, and uh, with our client uh, presentations, we had to quickly learn, you know, uh, in, in sales, every salesperson thinks, you know, I'm a lot better face-to-face -face meeting. You know, I don't, you know, I got to be there talking to the person and, um, to get it done. And so we had to do, um, we actually practiced and role played. How do we present uh, virtually? How do we be effective? First, how do you, you know, make Zoom work and where are the buttons to control your presentation and all, all that other good stuff. Um, so, so we did that, but what we found and we I found it not just with my employees and my staff, but also with our clients is that working virtually uh, uh, actually in many ways provided a more personal connection. Um, it seems like when people are in their home environment with uh, babies or pets or spouses uh, walking in and out of shots and uh, you know you see different things on the walls than you normally would um, it, and, it, and also for some reason in the virtual world it, people maybe share a little bit more uh, and I think part of it is where it, this is like a great equalizer we all are now living in these little boxes on our on our screen, and uh, maybe in a sales situation, if you would have been in a CEO's office trying to present, there might have been an uh, a intimidation factor. A you know, I'm here in my big office and you're coming to talk to me. Uh, you know, but all of a sudden we're all the same. We're all <laughs> sitting in these little boxes. You know looking at ourselves, which has been a lot of fun for a year. Um, it's opened up a lot of people's eyes to how they actually look. Um, so that was one of the things that, that happened. But with that personal touch, things that we added that have been different is uh, uh, initially I was guilty. I scheduled it. Hey, every night at five o'clock staff, we're going to get together. We're going to touch base on a Zoom meeting. And uh, over time, I cut that back. We still do it two times a week, but we'll just take 15 minutes, 20 minutes. And that is not talking about business. It is just saying, how you doing today? What happened today? You know, how are how you dealing with things? What's we, we would, uh, you know, to take topics where we'd say, you know, let's everybody share, you know, their favorite pizza. You know, everybody, we, we did a funny hats 
you know, Zoom call where everybody wore a funny hat. We had a backgrounds. Everybody changed their backgrounds to something. Uh, we did a Super Bowl picks, you know, uh, who, who's going to win the Super Bowl? Um, so uh, that was important. And again, it was that personal uh, connection when, when we did those. Um, we encouraged, in order to deal with, you know, my, my question was burnout. How do you not burn out? We talked about the importance of taking time for self-care because um, we all, believe it or not, are real hard workers and actually worked more and productivity went up working from home. And you almost have the opposite problem of not quitting uh, working at the end of the day. Or uh, we actually had a, a, a directive from our corporate leadership that said, we are not going to send out an oh my gosh email over the weekend time period from close of business Friday to Monday morning. We're, we're not going to send out a hey, what's going on with this to everybody? And we encourage you not to do the same thing. Uh, disconnect, get away from uh, uh, your laptop or your computer or your Surface Pro while the time that you're off. Uh, so that is encouraged. We encouraged taking lunches, going out for walks. Um, uh, before three-day weekends, uh, our uh, Sinclair had started something where they gave back two hours to everybody. Before the three-day three, three -day weekend would start, they'd say, take two hours, do whatever you want to do with those two hours to recharge and get ready for the weekend. Um, so the, those are some of the things that we use to, to help work through um, avoiding uh, burnout and, um, and really take a more personal connection with staff and with our clients uh, in the way that we work with them. Perfect. Thanks, Mike. And I've made a note that you will play a song later, so I'm looking forward to that. That'd be great. All right, here we go. Last but certainly not least, we have Cindy Wenninghoff. Cindy is the Employee Success Manager at Quantum Workplace. She has more than 10 years of experience working in human resources in various industries, including advertising, insurance, and technology. And at Quantum Workspace, Workplace, she oversees the employee success area that is responsible for employee engagement, recruiting, DE&I, onboarding and retention efforts. Cindy, welcome and congratulations on your new position at Quantum Workplace. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and what it was like in December joining a new team during a pandemic? Has it been easy for you to learn the company's culture as you oversee many areas of the company's employee engagement processes and programs? Hi everyone, good afternoon. Excited to be here, thank you. Uh, Quick about me, um, I started my career at The Knot, the magazine and website in a general HR position. And then I later joined Bailey Lowerman as the head of talent for three years. And then I transitioned to Silverstone Group, uh, an insurance broker here in town as the director of HR. And so I'm now at Quantum Workplace as the employee success manager as Carrie uh, described and managing our new team. Uh, I'm married. Uh, to my husband, Kevin, and I have two little kids, two under four. So we are a little nuts in our house <laughs> and we have a dog. Uh, so to answer your question, it's been really great. Uh, I will admit I was very nervous about starting a new position when 90% of our, we call them quirks, not employees, uh, when they were all home. And so it's taken some in intentional relationship building and reaching out. So at this point, I've had a one-on-one -on -one conversation via Zoom for the most part with 60% of our company, and that's about 100 out of 100 people, so 60 out of 100. So to kind of help with like making new quirks feel more comfortable, uh, we have something called culture coaches. So every new quirk is assigned a culture coach, uh, and it's someone outside of their department. And... That's been really helpful. Um, now I run the program, so uh, that's fun to kind of pair people up with common interests. I also took the time to read our recognition posts in our software just to kind of learn more about what people are getting recognized for, the feedback they're receiving, 
Um, and I also reviewed our past engagement survey data and uh, we did some pulse surveys as well. The culture that I know, I would say is for the most part of the people that are in the office. So I'm going in once or twice a week and we probably only have about 10% of our employees in the office. Uh, I can sense a bit obviously from Zoom meetings, but I don't think that's really the full picture. Uh, in general, uh, just some numbers that we've seen, engagement levels actually increased in 2020 to the highest levels that they've ever been. And that's across all of our customers that we have in like best place to work surveys and our customers. Um, the peak levels were in April and May, and then again in December. So it'll be interesting to see what 2021 brings. But yeah, that's how I would describe what it's been like so far. I'm three months in. Great, thanks for that. Uh, I heard Cindy likes to share a lot of stats and I know she's gonna be sharing some later too. So I'm looking forward to that as well. All right, here we go. So now that we've met all of our panelists, I'm gonna ask them a few additional questions. And I'm gonna start with Lindsay first and have you take the first one. So during an average day, we meet numerous times a day with our own team members and clients. How many Zoom or team calls are too many? Have we learned to work differently and set new patterns with team members? You know, I kind of want to echo some of the things that Mike said. It's really up to the relationship that you're trying to have. So that's really what defines how many meetings you need to have. So you, depending on who your clients are or who your team is, that's really uh, kind of up to you individually. Um, I don't, I think that there could be an issue with engagement potentially. Um, if it's too, obviously, if it's too much, you lose them. If it's too little, you lose them. So it's just finding the balance and really understanding who it is that you're talking to. So it's not about, and in, in, in my opinion, it's not about a certain magical number. It's about understanding who it is that you want to communicate with and what you're trying to achieve. And however many meetings it takes, so be it, whether they're in Zoom or any other method of communication. Mike, do you have anything to add to that? Um, yeah, I think, uh, uh, like I said, three Zoom meetings at the same time is probably too many. I think it should be limited to one at a time. And uh, I would limit it to one every hour, but that often doesn't happen. <laughs> because it, it, when you go back to back to back to back and, and everyone is sharing their uh, calendars and you're trying to find the little spot where they don't have a thing where you can get your meeting in there. You know, I, I think in general, uh, because most of these meetings, you know, I'd, I'd love to have uh, uh, Zoom do a setting or Teams do a setting that limited any meeting to 20 minutes uh, because sometimes a 45 minute meeting could have been done in 20 minutes. And if we were all limited to that, it would open up more little areas in between the meetings for us to uh, do work. <laughs> um, so, uh, it, I, you know, I, I think four a day would be more than enough, uh, but there's, it's very rare that I would be only having four uh, Zoom calls a day. I understand that fully. So thanks, Mike. All right, next, I'd like to ask you, Alicia, how are teams still successfully collaborating on projects while working separately from home? Has technology, has technology been able to allow us to continue to work closely as a team? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that technology has been key, uh, obviously, whether it's Zoom, Teams, whatever it may be. Um, it's Pretty much been the only way we've been able to connect for this past year so uh, our team uh, has really taken a deep dive into teams and you know we've got channels for various different topics whatever that may be from a, a professional setting but then we also have a few um you know just fun channels that we have whether that's what did everyone just buy on amazon lately you know share your link here or you know it's it's just gifts and you know sharing fun memes uh, just to kind of lighten the day sometimes and connect when it's not necessarily business related. Um, I, I think that uh, a lot of what we do involves a lot of teamwork and, and open communication. And so I think 
the easier it is to access, you know, you know, a shared file or a shared link to something, or even just having an open conversation with your teammates. Um, I mean, we've all seen the jokes. Uh, this Zoom meeting could could have been an email type thing. So I think having those uh, those channels in in our teams has really helped to uh, kind of make our teams work more efficiently uh, and and kind of all be on the same page. Um, we do, of course, still do you know weekly full team meetings just so that we all understand you know again that common goal. Um, but then we also do um, weeklies with just manager and employee, so we kind of all get on the same page there. But um, I think technology has been key in making sure that we all stay connected. Um, you, you know, every week in our all team meeting, we do uh, on even days, we do your highs and your lows. So everyone goes around and they talk about, you know, what's a high point for your week and what's a low point for your week. So we're all communicating and still sharing our struggles and concerns and how can one team member help another. And, you know, if if somebody's got a really great high, we're celebrating with them. You know, we're, we're there in spirit, even if it is virtually. So uh, I would say definitely technology has been a huge help just to, just to keep us all together. Perfect. Lauren, what about you guys? How are your teams working? And yes, thank you. I appreciate the question. Um, as I mentioned before, I work within a team of five people and it's not just my, and they're not just my office mates, they are my team. We are working together all day, every day. And before I could just turn around and say, where is this at? Or can you help me with this? Or walk down the hall. And then all of a sudden that changed. And for a little bit, I felt like I lost half my brain. Like I just, it was just like this block a little bit. Like I can't just go see that person ask that question but looking back we didn't miss a beat we we kept moving you know while we were pivoting so were our clients they were going to work from home they were changing messaging they were changing media i mean it was just everything was changing but the reason we didn't miss a beat is because of technology um we kind of saw the writing on the wall my supervisor said hey we're going to figure out this teams thing you know that annoying pop-up you've been getting on your screen for like ever we're actually going to look at what that is and figure out how we can use it because it would come up every day and i'd be like what is this thing let's close this window i don't need this thing and now that's all we use um so it's really just that has been key for us and then you know sometimes since we're also used to working together in the same room sometimes we will just open up teams and have a meeting and literally not talk to each other but just be together and you can hear somebody typing or you can hear somebody working. And if somebody has a question, they just ask it. And that has been lovely. We also have the fun hours where we don't talk about work. We kind of just get away for a little bit and talk about, you know, what's going on in our lives, some fun things. And um, one thing we've introduced is just randomly random gift parties. So you find the most random gift you can on, on Teams and you send it and it's just this stream of weird gifts. And it's just like 10 minutes of just taking a breath taking a break, um, being together with your team, even though we can't be together. So that has really saved us. I mean, still, I miss my friends. I miss my team. But um, having that ability to connect through technology has really just allowed us to keep, keep operating in the most seamless and most efficient way possible. Excellent. Yes, gifts have become the new language of the pandemic, that is for sure. All right, the next thing I'd like to know is we all have lives outside of our careers, hopefully in this industry, family, home life, and children are priorities along with our jobs. And when you're in the office, you're more likely to leave at the end of the day. Lisa, I'd like to have you help me with this one. When working from home, do you feel like you need to keep working? Or during the last year, have you had guilt if not working when you're home? So in other words, can you kind of talk to me about home life, work life balance? Sure. Um, I think um, like a lot of us, we love our jobs because we're in such a fun industry. So um, it sometimes it doesn't feel like work to work. And um, I can share a secret with you all. This is my excuse to not cook. Like I'm always working late. No, can you make? Uh, yeah, I'm still work. No, I can't. So um, yeah, that gets me out of making dinner. So I love it. Um, I think the other great thing is, you know, I'm a mom, so it's easy for easier for me to, you know, take time to do my daughter's, you know, ballet bun in the middle of the day that I couldn't have done before. So there's, you know, 
since we're in such a deadline focused industry, yeah, sure. There are nights that I work late, and, but then there are days that are slower that, you know, I don't have, since I, we don't have this whole butts in seats mentality anymore, you know, that I can, you know, do other things with my kids. I can, you guys, I, I have to take my daughter to get spray tans for her competition dance team. Who does that? I do that. <laughs> So, yeah, I think it's, um, you know, yeah, we work when we work, but it also, you know, allows like a greater level of personal freedom that I think will be hard to give up if everyone decides that we have to just sit in an office every day from eight to five. Definitely. And you just helped a lot of people get out of cooking dinner. So that might be the best takeaway of the day. So thanks so much for that. Um, all right, uh, for time's sake, I'm going to move to the next one. So I'd like to get your perspective from an HR professional's point of view, Cindy. Um, what are some ideas you can give us to help the work-home life balance to help with avoiding stress and burnout? Sure. Uh, flexibility, I think, is one of the biggest perks you can give people. Uh, wellness programs as well, and they should attend to many aspects of health. Employees that are employees are three and a half times more likely to be engaged if they believe that their workplace supports their health and well-being. So I would strongly recommend doing that. Uh, mandated time off is nice. Uh, I would strongly encourage you to do that. Focus time. So you can, you know, change your Slack or Teams message or status to say that you're away or, uh, you know, change your little emoji on Slack that says literally focus time so people know not to bother you. I personally block my calendar uh, so people can't uh, book meetings with me. Uh, I would also say education on mental health, uh, sharing your employee assistance program information. G Ginger is a company you could look into. They offer 24 seven mental health support via their app. And for 2021, mental health should be a huge priority. People are extremely burnt out. They're very stressed. And especially those that are under the age of 30, uh, I've seen um, some data on people that are under the age of 30 have the highest level of stress. Open your meetings early so that you can allow for kind of that small talk that you would normally do in the office. Ask them how you're doing, and then maybe another question of how are you really doing um, so that you don't get the, I'm good, I'm fine type questions. I've done virtual yoga, I've done virtual bar. I also delay delivery my emails if I am working outside of business hours because I don't want to stress other people out that I'm sending emails because that might be what works for me. You can, I've also, um, read recently the Netflix No Rules Rules book, uh, who had unlimited vacation time. And they had a great idea that I'm using now about sharing your vacation and like what you did on vacation with your employees. So they know it's okay to take time off. And that starts at the top. We have some employees that have goals in our own software to take at least one half day off per month. I love that. Prioritize your people, not just as an employee, but as a person, like really get to know them. Have a planner that can really help you. Some options that I found are the four progress planner and goal digger planner. And just know that your own personal experience is not that of other people. So just because maybe you're not experiencing something like burnout, just know that a lot of people are. Perfect. Thanks. All right. So Lisa, I'm going to have you take this next one. Building Brands Daily, have you been able to find new creative ideas to keep your client meetings engaging? Um, it's interesting. Um, I actually attended um, a panel discussion um, with um, Alicia's boss. And since they were, you know, in charge of, you know, running all these virtual meetings, um, I picked up some cues from her. Um, and the biggest takeaway I got from that was, you know, cut it short, like, you know, to keep people engaged, you, you know, have to do stuff as fast as you can, because otherwise you'll lose them. 
And at Daiki, you know, we do a lot of branding, like intense branding workshops that, you know, were at a minimum half day. And we did a lot of full day sessions. And we found that we have to figure out ways to cut those to be two hours max. And so we're doing a lot more like upfront work with surveys and, um, and just doing as much ahead of time as we can and getting, um, doing one-on-one -on -one interviews from, with people, you know, so those are shorter. Um, and then also when we're doing our workshops, we, you know, we make sure that we're, we have interactive components so, you know, we're not just talking at people for two hours that, you know, they're involved and, you know, we use the functions where people can, you know, be broken out into different groups and then come back and, and share what they're doing. So I think it's, you know, Im important just A, be really short and B, you know, make people more interactive and involved. Perfect. All right, so uh, some of you know, recently AAF Omaha hosted a virtual Meet the Pros, which is their Federation's annual student conference. Um, for this two-day conference, the planning team included a segment about this year's AAF Omaha public service client, which is the Refugee Empowerment Center. Uh, they were trying to help them with their marketing plan and also to help them with their fundraising program of selling candles. Uh, while presenting, uh, the team incorporated the sense of smell into their virtual program by having lit refugee candles behind them or at their workspaces um, and mentioning it throughout the presentation. So while attendees could see the burning candles, hopefully through their electronic devices, were able to trigger the sense of smell as they presented information about the client. So I'm opening this up to anybody, um, seeing if anyone has had or has seen or used successful ways to incorporate senses, touch, smell, et cetera, into work or client meetings. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll take this one. Um, I, I would say a lot of times, uh, you know, you have your general things like sharing a, a gift box with attendees or clients that has some sort of food or beverage item um, that, you know, that they can taste, obviously. Um, but I think other ones that we might not necessarily always think about. So, you know, candles, the sense of smell, that's a perfect one. Um, a lot of hotels actually in hotel partners have uh, a special scent. Um, and so uh, we will send out client gifts um, that have that specific hotel that we would typically go to in the past that scent. So, you know, when you when you do smell that candle, it triggers, oh, I remember the Marriott or whatever that was, you know, so um, it's just a, a fun way to kind of bring us together, or think about those memories of travel and then the excitement of when we get to travel again in the future. So um, I think that's definitely always a fun one. Um, and then, of course, you know, something as simple as creating a shared Spotify playlist and, you know, sharing it with others, um, whether that's attendees or an internal meeting so that you guys are all listening to the same thing. You guys are all excited and getting pumped up with the same music um, or even, you know, something along the lines of a Spotify playlist to open up uh, a virtual event or, you know, team meeting. Um, I think that that always gives people uh, a, a sense of connectedness, you know, music, music always brings people together. So um, I think things like that are always simple, but uh, nice touches that people really remember. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, next up, Alicia, I'm actually going to stick with you on this one. Um, what ways have your teams or offices met or gathered for non work related events to keep team building and camaraderie alive throughout the pandemic? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, I think that it's, it's one of those things where it can be something as simple as everyone getting together on a Zoom and you have a beverage and, you know, a random Monday afternoon just to chat and hang out, you know, virtual happy hour, if you will, or, um, you know, we propose to a lot of our clients, whether it's a at home sushi making class, or it's a cocktail kit, you know, a cocktail making class, something like that. Um, that really is fun. And it kind of brings people together. But that, you know, there are other things, you know, you can do trivia, you can do, you know, nowadays they have escape rooms that are virtual, you know, things like that, where um, I think that they're fun and interactive, but yet it's something simple and everyone feels safe and comfortable. Um, obviously with the beautiful weather coming our way, fingers crossed. <laughs> Um, it'll be nice that I think that people can start having picnics outside again if they're comfortable, you know, depending on the size of your team, 
um, you know, some of those outdoor gatherings might be okay if they're, if they're comfortable with it. So uh, I think just the simple ways to connect, uh, always, always make it easier on, on the team when they do have those stressful days to kind of think about just remembering the work-life balance. It's the biggest part, so. Perfect. And I'll throw some insights. I mentioned at the beginning that I am on the social committee and a few of the things that we've done that have been really successful. Um, scavenger hunts have been really fun. It's a great way to get people up out of their seats. Um, just go find these three items and the first person back gets the point. Um, we have also done the food demonstrations. Um, myself and another coworker were the only two who actually also made it, but it was still a really fun thing for everybody to, to watch. So I think you don't always have to come up with ideas where everyone participates. It's still just fun to bring everyone together. Um, another one, we did two truths and a lie. This was a great way for us to get to know everyone, especially we did have people coming in during the pandemic. So it was really fun to everybody guess which one was a lie and then they got to tell the story um, behind it. So those have been some really fun ones. And then another one, you know, you don't always have to have a, an actual Zoom meeting. Um, we do like uh, workout challenges or step challenges where as a team, you kind of collect. And so it's a way to kind of team build, I think, without actually having to have another meeting on someone's calendar. So thought I'd throw those in there. Um, all right, I don't know if we're doing all right on time, stop me. Play the music there uh, if, you, if you need to. Okay, next up, um, I'd like to ask Cindy, um, what are some healthy work from home habits that you encourage people to practice? Yeah, I would say have a dedicated workspace so you can unplug. It's too easy to work if you're at your kitchen table. Um, I did that early on and I was like, I need to separate where I'm eating from where I'm working. And so I, I definitely did that early on and I love plants. I think plants can really spruce up your space and just make it a little bit more lively in your space, have a proper computer chair and table. Uh, I know my husband works late at night and he's sitting at our kitchen table in a kitchen chair, which bothers me. Uh, and again, like with use your calendar, set reminders to go on a walk um, or to get up. I know my watch tells me when I need to get up. So I got a reminder six minutes ago. Um, make sure you take a lunch break, form a step challenge. Like Carrie said, like a little competition. You could have a lunch and learn on people's home office setup. You could have a contest for their home office setup. And you could also provide maybe a stipend to help them set up their home office and get any tech needs and let them work a schedule that they need for their life. Um, don't mandate the hours that they need to work. Just have a philosophy of get your work done. Show examples of setting boundaries. If you're a leader, delay your de emails. Don't Slack or Teams message people after 5 p.m. And then we've done a lot of different like engagement things. We did a Valentine's day event where we stacked candy hearts on video. That was fun. We've played Jackbox, crowd party. We have a water cooler trivia integration with Slack um, and much more to come, but we're trying things out for sure. I'm going to need that full list because that sounds amazing. All right, Cindy, while we've got you still, I would love to hear those stats that you want to share. We're just kind of, what's the future of working from home? Um, are people going to be still working from home, back in the office, what do you see? Yeah, so we asked about over 65,000 people and we are, we had 65,000 respondents. And under normal circumstances was the question, how often would you prefer to work from home? 11% said never, 22% said occasionally, 46% said regularly, meaning one to two times per week, and 21% said always. According to SHRM, half of workers want to work from home per permanently. And then another stat from SHRM is 27% of organizations plan to bring all employees back to the work site when the vaccine becomes more widely available. 34% uh, of organizations are still unsure. 18% don't ever plan to have employees return. And 5% reported uh, date is already in progress. Um, so the research of everything I've read says that post COVID, it will be a mix of hybrid and work from home. Perfect. All right. Um, so we're kind of running out of time. Uh, so unless any of the panelists want to add anything else, we can move uh, to Aaron to do some Q and A if we have any. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, given the, the time here too, if anyone, if any attendees do have some questions, 
Um, we can put a contact in the bottom. If you've got a question for any one of the, the panelists, maybe we can move that way. We, we want to be mindful of your time. So um, uh, we'll, I think we can kind of proceed that way. But you know, thanks so much, Carrie, and all of our panelists. I think this was a great, a great tool for people and a lot of good information for people to kind of take some little nuggets back with them. Um, and we really, really appreciate your time. This is this is not an easy thing, especially when we all have enough Zoom meetings already, right? So as I mentioned earlier, our board of directors and membership team has been working hard to bring creative events, conferences, and new special events along with webinars and virtual program to programming to our benefits for members. Um, and then speaking of member benefits, we have two member perks to award today. Um, I might butcher names, I don't know yet. Teresa Lauber from LRS Healthcare and Hunter Stewart from the Creative Center have both won $5 gift cards. Um, and that's thanks to our member perks partners at Scooters. Uh, so Teresa and Hunter, your gift cards will be mailed to you. Um, <clears throat> and today we'd like to thank also our elite sponsors and members from Centro and Woodman Life uh, for their generosity to the AAF Omaha throughout the year. Our sponsors allow us to continue to bring professional development and educational opportunities to our members and the Nebraska advertising community. So if you're looking for sponsorship opportunities to reach our advertising, marketing, and communications community, uh, contact the AAF uh, Omaha office for a lineup of opportunities. And then a couple of events we have coming up, mark your calendars. We're gonna talk about team building and events for your teams outside of the virtual work of environment on April 29th. Um, so that's, uh, we're planning ad wars for the, for April 29th. Um, and it's going to be interesting because we've obviously taken the show, uh, online this year. Um, we have teams of six to 10 that can register online now. Um, and it's sure to be fun as we kind of test our advertising trivia skills. If anyone's ever been a part of ad wars, you know, it's a blast. This year will be just as fun. Just it'll be, uh, online. And then on April 20th, we have Larry Brantley, president of Kellner, Dallas, and NYC. Um, and he's going to share the tools that he uses daily uh, to target clients and talent. And the presentation is going to focus on how to position yourself as the ideal candidate for an employer's consideration. Uh, we'll discuss tips on appropriate targeting, interview prep, salary negotiation, cultural fit, and what else you should consider in order to hear you're hired. Um, this is a two-part Second part of a two-part series, Larry spoke in August and you know everybody was really loving what he had to say and so they wanted to bring him back. So this is part two for that. So good for anyone, whether you're looking for a new position now or a new opportunity or in the future. So uh, encourage everyone to register for that event. Um, and then finally, just thanks again, everybody. Sorry, we ran a couple minutes late, but I hope everyone got a lot of good information out of this webinar and we'll see you back for the next one. Take care, guys. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, I don't think everybody I stayed on her quick photo. <laughs> picture of us. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I did get a few screenshots before everybody. Okay. Off, so <laughs> I did. Thanks, Terry. <laughs> Thank you. Great Thanks, job, Jay. everybody. Great job. Oh, Thank awesome. Fabulous. Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I think we really could have gone on for a half an hour longer. It was great. <laughs> Thanks. Take care. Bye, Lindsay. Take care.